Welcome everybody back into Nerd Sesh. As always, I'm Carson Breber and alongside me is Logan Camden. And today we are going to be doing a good old fashioned classic trivia time. We've been bringing guests on the past few weeks and we will continue to do that going forward. But this week, it's just Logan and I going head to head. I will be answering 10 questions of NBA trivia. He will be answering 10 questions of NFL trivia. We're going to have a five minute time limit on this episode just to make sure no one question drags too much. And that's really all there is to it. So Logan, I will throw it over to you. What do you got for me for the first question? Brever man, 10 players in NBA history have had 10 or more seasons averaging 25 or more points per game. Can you name them all? Ooh, very straightforward. I love it. So LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Michael Jordan, yeah, Carl well, Malone. Ugh. I think we'll have both Elgin Baylor and Jerry West here. So West is here. Baylor is not. Okay, interesting. Do we have Oscar Robertson here? The big O is not here. Okay, we're going to have Kobe Bryant here. You now have everybody with more than 10. All four guys remaining have 10 exactly. Do we have Shaquille O'Neal here? You do have Shaq. Everybody's probably screaming, oh, Wilt Chamberlain, Wilt Chamberlain. I think Wilt only has like eight because he has the seven scoring titles. And then outside of that, I don't know if he averaged 25 points per game. So I'm not going to guess Wilt and you guys are going to have to deal with it. Your intuition is correct. He only did it eight times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Allen Big Iverson. O, Big O is a great guess. He did it nine times. AI is here. Just had okay. two to go. Okay. James Harden? No. Ooh, Harden has eight. Also, Baylor, another yeah. great guess, also has eight. Mm -hmm. So, Carson, technically, I mean... technically if, you, if you get this, you got two guys to go. You're going to have everybody with eight or more. Ooh. Okay, why not get myself some bonus points? Kareem, wow. One to go. Okay. I'm thinking about the other all-time great scorers. Dirk, I don't think will be here. Moses, I don't think will be here. Mello won't be here. Who is this last fellow? Dr. J won't be here. Dirk has Man. five. Mello has seven. Uh, this I'm... is a crazy one. I don't think he quite has ten, but he's probably close. Neek? Dominique Wilkins is the correct answer, Carson. Well done. Let's go. Dude, uh, and I want to give some credit dude, to the top guys in here. I think it's absolutely absurd. LeBron has 19 seasons, bro. KD has yeah. 14. It's absolutely absurd. Uh, the longevity, the peaks, and how long they've been doing this for forever uh they are a top of the heap in this conversation i just want to give them extra credit man that's crazy yeah just every single year like it's nothing okay logan you gave me a nice meatball down the middle to get things started off i'm gonna throw you a 98 mile an hour heater and we'll see if you can hit it can you name every quarterback the patriots drafted during the tom brady era I will do my best. Let's go. Uh, we got Kevin O'Connell. That's correct. 2008. Uh, we're going to have uh, Ryan Mallett. That is correct. Jimmy 2011. Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett, I believe. Mm hmm. 16 and 14. Did Rohan Davey get drafted? Sure did. Back in 2002, he was the first Brady backup drafted. Was Brian Hoyer drafted by the Patriots? Brian Hoyer was not. In fact, was Brian Hoyer picked at all? He was not. Okay, how many other guys am I missing here? So you're missing five. Two... Honestly, three of which are quite gettable. I expect you to get. The next two are really hard, and I will give you hints. I might need the years on uh, on these guys. Sure, I'll give you the years for all of them. So, 03, 05, 2010, 2018, and 2019. 
Oh, uh, what's that guy's name? Um, oh, the the speedy guy. Um, or wait, is Danny Edling one of them too? Oh my God, 2018, dude. Um, Jared Stidham. Yeah, 2019. 2010. Um, that's the toughest one for sure. Guy never what? appeared in an NFL game. He was a seventh round pick. This is definitely gettable for me, though. Yeah, because you're like that. It's not. Uh, I think he was drafted by the Broncos, but he was on their practice squad. Is it Tom Brandstater? Oh, no, it's not Tom Brandstater, whoever that is. That guy sounds like his father owns a Fortune 500 company. 2010. Um, ah, never mind. He went to Fresno State. <laughs> Put some respect on Fresno. I literally will never. It's the worst place I've ever been. Oh, three. Okay. So I got three QBs remaining, right? Yeah, and I will give you hints, but 05 is pretty easy. He's one of the best guys on this entire list, was a seventh rounder. Oh, Matt Castle. Duh. I should have got Matt him Castle. Oh, three, a sixth rounder who uh, remains notable today. It's not... Um, Just not for his playing career. It's not Chris Sims, is it? Mm-mm. Not for his playing career. Remains relevant. Got a little bit less relevant uh, about a year ago, but... Oh, man, I'm just thinking about Carmazzi, the guy the Niners took over Brady back in that 0-1 draft. I bet they wish they could have that one back. Um, I don't know. <laughs> where did uh, where did these guys go to college? Are you willing to give me that? I will. It's going to be a giveaway, I think, for the 0-3 guy, Texas Tech. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm kind of – I wish I had, and that's Cliff Kingsbury. That's correct. The other guy, Oklahoma State, Logan. And that doesn't help me all that much. Damn. Oh, no. wait, wait. It's Zach Robinson. It's Zach Robinson. Oh, bro. What a pull. Yes. Look at that. Coming out Dude. the gates. Perfect. Let me tell you, man. I pulled that one out my ass. That was an obscure <laughs> roster pull right there, guys. Whew. Fire Very nice. Look at the pod started nicely. Carson. Oh, yeah. You just named some all-time scorers. We're going to do another very simple task. I'm going to name a country, and you're going to tell me their all-time leading scorer. We're going to okay. start it out with France. France. Are we counting Dominique Wilkins? Uh, I, I'm i not counting me. Okay. Uh, you could. Then Tony Parker. That is correct. What about Serbia? Serbia's all-time leading scorer. Is it Peja? It's Peja. Jokic is going to break it this season, though. He's yeah. about 500 points off. What about Slovenia? Goran Dragic. Easy money. What about Spain? I gotta love the former Yugoslav countries, man. Pau Gasol. Correct. One more. What about Switzerland? Nikola Vucevic. Oh, my gosh. It's just too easy. Cash. Let's go. All right. That was a fun one. Look at us, Logan. We're moving through these. This one is very relevant, just given what is going on in the news with the NFL right now. And this is not to assert a stance on that topic. I just think it's interesting, given all the talk about running backs, holding out, mm -hmm. trying to get better pay. Can you name me the highest paid running back on a Super Bowl team since 2010, Logan? Gotta be beast mode. Yep. Easy money. You got that one right off the bat. It's interesting because there's a graphic that floats around a lot of like each team's uh, leading rusher in the Super Bowl the year they won and how much they were paid. And Percy Harvin was the guy for the Seahawks. So people say that like there hasn't been a running back to make two million bucks on a Super Bowl winning team in however long. But Marshawn is basically the last guy to make decent money as a running back and uh win the super bowl well done all right let's go dude yeah and uh there's been another one floating around too where all of basically the big contracts that have been paid out to running backs all of those guys have been cut from their teams except for mccaffrey it's it's mm -hmm. pretty remarkable carson 12 players 
in NBA history have played for 10 or more NBA teams. Holy Can you name at crap. least five of them? Ish Smith. <laughs> he has played for the most with 13. That is correct. Has Jeff Green done this? Jeff Green uh, is, I think, yeah, tied for uh, six with 11. Okay. Oh, and I, I will give you some hints on some of these guys if you need them. Dude, I've actually looked up a list like this before months ago because I was curious. And I know there's some randos. Well, I guess obviously pretty much all of them are randos. Joe Smith? Yes, that's correct. Number one overall pick, Joe mm -hmm. Smith. Good pull, dude. Just a legendary journeyman. Okay. 10 plus teams, man. How many of these guys are 21st century? Um. Oh. Yeah. So we've got. Oh, I didn't love that. Let me put it this way, Carson. There's five guys that I know on this list. Okay. So very, very gettable, very gettable. One of these guys, a prominent scorer of the '90s, wasn't on great teams or anything. Mm. Uh, another okay, one of these guys wore his socks really high. Uh, that's how I remember him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how helpful that is for little old one of me. these guys. An another accessory uh, were a really big pair of shorts, comical almost, in a, a really funny photo shoot. Uh, a really that'll... big pair of shorts. God, I don't know what the fashion hints are going to do it for me, but <laughs> I like where your reason, head's at. There's a reason why those shorts are really baggy on that gentleman. And then... Be skinny well, as hell. One of these gentlemen, something like that. One of these gentlemen shares his last name with a skateboarding trick. <sighs> Kickflip? <laughs> Tony Kickflip. Uh, Keep going. Okay. It's, uh, Frankly, it's Logan, pretty... I'm not sure any of those hints did a single <laughs> thing for me, except for the 90s score. So let me think about that. A guy who was getting buckets wasn't all that good. I mean, my first thought is, is his like a Glenn Rice, but he didn't play. He didn't play on that many teams. I, th I think this guy was his on. Teams he might have good. He might have been on one of the worst. Dude, one year dropped 25 a night. Okay. Uh, that just super specifically made me think of Jim Jackson, but I don't know that he played long enough. Perhaps. Do you, do you want to throw him out there? Is it Jim Jackson? Jim Jackson is one of the guys played for 12 different teams, Carson. They forget about those 96 Mavs, man. Monster Mash, J. Kidd, Jim Jackson, Young, having fun until it all went south. Okay, that's a good poll. And now maybe I'll just think about uh, guys who make sense because I don't know if the other hints are going to help me. I, I honestly, no. How I many got teams a couple... did Vince Carter end up playing for? Like seven? That's actually, not a bad you know what, Carson? I'm going to ask a question about that later, so keep that in the back of your head. Hawks, Grizzlies, Kings, Magic, Stop, stop, Raptors, stop. You're doing Nets. too much, man. You're doing too much. Oh, is that the question? Stop. You're Did doing I too much. Did I anticipate a question? Yes. That's kind of your crazy. Intuition is, your intuition's on a different level. That is actually kind of crazy. Okay, I just need one more. I got, like uh, I said, I, I have another hint. Uh, I got a couple other hints that, that i don't know if they'll do the trick let me see if i can key in on the skateboarding one because that's really interesting but what's do like i know the name of that many skateboarding moves ollie what's like hmm kevin ollie kevin ollie played for 11 different teams let me wow. run you down let me run you down the rest of this list man it is hilarious lou amundsen uh, mm. The guy with the big shorts, Earl mm. Boykins. Uh, you've got mm. Mark Bryant here. The guy with the big socks was Anthony Tolliver. Uh, you've got Mike James, Chucky Brown, and Tony Massenburg. 
Wow, that would have been tough. Earl Boykin's Logan, a more helpful hint might be uh, historically short or something like that. Well, yeah, if I, I said guess that, you... I felt like it was going to be kind of easy, you know? I guess, yeah. Okay, great question. A little bit of assistance there, but uh, that was a fun one. Logan, we're going to keep hitting the headlines here because D-Hop just signed with the Tennessee Titans, meaning most likely... His starting quarterback this year will be Ryan Tannehill. We could see some Will Levis. We, I don't know, could see some Malik Willis. But right now, I'd say the presumptive starter is Ryan Tannehill. So, in his storied career, can you name me every leading receiver Ryan Tannehill has played with? Yeah, let's do it. Is my man Kenny Stills here? Kenny Stills is actually not here. What about Devontae Parker? Devontae Parker is actually not here. That's really surprising. Yeah, Tannehill was on those Dolphins teams uh, early 2010s. I mean, Kenny Stills is a super good guess. He had over 700 yards in 2016 with Tannehill. And Devontae Parker actually had 18 more yards than him that year. So they were the number two and three receivers on that team. Albert Wilson, is he here? Not Albert Wilson. Who might have been a better Dolphin in 2016 than those two guys, Logan? Dang, who was on that team? Um, and now I'm thinking about Mike Gesicki and Jordan Cameron. Okay, let's get a couple. Let's get a couple softballs. A.J. Brown? A.J. Brown, 2019 through 2021. For what it's worth, Logan, I know you love Albert Wilson, but the man never had a 600-yard season. I loved Albert Wilson, man. I thought he was going to be a beast out of the slot. Well, we all have dreams. (laughs) Tavion Kinsey, future top five pick in the NBA draft. Yeah, Um, nobody's even going to know what you're talking about because nobody knows who Tavion Kinsey is. Or was it Summer League? Somebody out there will know. Is it Mike Gesicki? Is that who it is? It's not Kasicki. I don't know. Was is it a legend? Like, am I missing out on somebody big? No, just like definitely the best receiver of this era of Miami football. <sighs> Catch machine. Dang, man, still in might... the league, but just barely. This might stump me. Actually, a lefty. So, one of your brethren. Did Deshaun Jackson ever play in Miami? I don't know why I'm thinking about Deshaun Jackson right now. No. More obvious than that, I actually had a real personal vendetta against this guy because he injured a Bills player in a way that I found was rather dishonorable with, like, a blindside block. Oh, my gosh. Bro. How did I compl- I completely forgot that Jarvis Landry was a Miami Dolphin. I completely forgot there that Jarvis you go. Landry played for the Dolphins. So he gets you actually just two seasons. You need the 2012 through 2014 spots, 2018, and this past year, 2022. 2022 was abysmal, man. Who was uh, – is it mm-hmm. Traylon Burks? Was he the leading receiver? He got hurt. It's not actually – Nick Westbrook, a Keeney man. No, but I love where you're at. Keep firing. Who is? I mean, uh, what's, Willie? Uh, not Willie. It's, let's see. Um, for what it's worth, Burks had 444. Westbrook, a had 397, and the leader only had 527. So you're not far off. The leader, much more of a veteran, a very good cr- receiver is, throughout his career. Is it Julio? It's not Julio. Oh, Julio was a buck. What am I talking about? Chris Moore? No. Better. Honestly, I think this is probably the toughest one, just uh, given Dude, the Logan <laughs> hasn't watched football in the last five years narratives. <laughs> I think I'm going to throw in the towel on this one, man. I think I got no. one of these guys. Yeah. No, no, no. Not yet. Not yet. Really? I don't, I don't, I, I ain't got it in me, man. 
Okay. 2012 and 2013, you're going to be pissed about some of these. Brian Hartline, 2014, Mike Wallace, 2018, Danny Amendola, 2022, Bobby Trees of the Woodman, Robert Woods. Yeah, the only one I'm not upset about is, is Brian Hartline, just a serviceable guy. I'm kind of mad about all those other ones, though. But you kind of guess Brian Hartline a lot. I, more than the average person, for sure. Yeah. I, I do remember Brian Hartline. All right. Ah, missed up. I got I to gotta get one back. Well, Carson, I'm kind of mad at you for what you did on this last question. Why don't you just name every team that Vince Carter played for? Dude, that's legitimately insane. Okay, well, I had already done most of them. So we have uh, Toronto, we have the Nets, we have the Magic, we have the Grizzlies, we have the Kings, we have the Hawks. How many more are there? Dude, I think you just have one. You said uh, you said uh, you said the Mavericks. I know for the last one, you said it for this one too, right? Oh, I don't think I repeated well, them, but you said, said Dallas on the time. last one, so I gave it to you. You're just missing okay. one team, sandwiched in between Orlando and Dallas. Hmm. Who was that? Like. 2012 range. Uh, let me and visualize Vince Sanity. Before coming up with this question, I actually didn't really remember this. Uh, arc I don't Vince's know. Career. I, this is like a vague memory. Is it the Suns? It is Phoenix, man. Well done. Wow. Let's go, dude. Am I? You know what's am I a? a I mean, tell me if I'm getting out of control here, but am I some sort of psychic, Logan? Dude, I think you may be like the most advanced form of AI on the planet, Carson. Um, I will take that, dude. You know what makes me mad, dude, is it's not even like I accelerated that qu question up my list. That was next. That was literally the next question in the line, man. That's ridiculous. I'm like that, bro. Okay, Logan, we're going to play a little game called Over Under Troy Aikman Touchdowns, okay? I'm going to name five quarterbacks one by one. You're going to tell me if they had more or fewer career touchdowns than the all-time great Troy Aikman. I'm fired Derek up this. Carr, Logan, way over. Andy Dalton. Ooh, ooh. Give me the over. Give me the over. Even further over, actually. How about young Patrick Mahomes? Oh, no. Oh, what is Aikman at lifetime? If I had to guess, I would say Aikman's at like what? Like 125, 130? Is that, is that in the right ballpark in the vicinity? He's higher than that. I've debated if I should or should not give you the numbers for this. But I will tell you that he is higher than that. Mahomes. Mahomes has had three seasons of really, really high play. That'll ballpark him at like 130 to 150. I'm going to take the under. Patrick Mahomes has more career touchdowns Already? than Troy Aikman. Yes. He has, in fact, 27 more career touchdowns than Troy Aikman after his four Dude, seasons take that, take or five that. seasons as a starter. You Aikman top 10 truthers, man. That's ridiculous. I don't know. And nobody could possibly think that. Troy Aikman is the most overrated quarterback of all time. He literally should not be a Hall of Famer. Is that it? Is, was that the three? No, we've got two more, but you missed one now. Keep keep it rolling. Jared, I'm going to finish this. Yeah, we will. Jared Goff. I guess I'll take the over. He's actually under. Just barely, though. He's only 10 under Aikman. How about Cam Newton? Ooh. Man, I do want to say, I want to go on record. Cam had one of the highest peaks of any quarterback of all time, dude. Like, if we rank QB peaks that 2015 season, it could very mm -hmm. well be, like, like top five, maybe. I, Cam, I'm... I don't know, man. His rookie season and 2015, he balled out. I'll take the over on Cam. 
Cam is comfortably over. So now I'll give you all the exact numbers just because they're interesting. Aikman had 165 in his career, okay? Derek Carr has 217. Andy Dalton has 244. Patrick Mahomes, after five seasons, has 192. Jared Goff oh has 155, and Cam had 194. Do you think Aikman's the most overrated if Namath is in the conversation? That's an interesting question. I don't know. I like Broadway Joe. At least he had a little spunk to him. Little I think that those are the two. Sure. I think those are the two. I think... Broadway Joe's one Super Bowl is obviously more iconic. I also think that at his peak, though, I mean, like, yeah, he turned the ball over a lot, but Broadway Joe was a top five quarterback in that era of, of football for a time, for sure. I don't think Aikman ever achieved those heights. Bro just had, like, maybe the greatest half-decade roster ever around him. I mean, it's them in the 80s, 90s, right? Like, those teams are just ridiculous. Well, they were able to rebuild so heavily uh, after that massive haul they got from Minnesota with all those picks. So Minnesota, uh, Minnesota. I like that question, though. Carson, this is one of my favorite ones uh, ever. Can you name every player with 10 or more seasons shooting over 40 percent from deep in NBA history? There are six gentlemen. Super fun question. Steph Curry. That's correct. He is number two with 12 such seasons. So Clay comes in in 2011. I believe he's only shot under 40% once in the 2022 season, but he didn't play in 21. He didn't play in 20, so I believe that he just has nine. Is Kyle Korver here? Dude, good pull. Kyle Korver is here. He is tied for second with Steph with 12. Can and you confirm that I didn't outthink myself with Clay? Clay has nine. You're exactly right. Yeah. Good old fashioned deductive reasoning. Okay. Uh, is uh, Ray Allen here? Ray Allen is not here, actually. That's a good mm. guess. Allen uh, tied at 11th with eight. And I don't think Reggie's going to be here. Is JJ Reddick here? Reddick is not. Reddick is tied for 20th with seven seasons. Okay. Is Steve Kerr here? Steve Kerr is here, fourth with 11 seasons. Should I just go to the top of the list for percentage? Is Hubert Davis here? <laughs> shut up. Shut up, Hubert. Uh, Hu Seriously. Hubert's actually pretty close. Eight seasons. He's also tied wow. uh, at 11. Yeah. So obviously longevity is uh, super useful here. So who else are sharpshooters who played a really long time? Del Curry? Not Del Curry. I'll give you a hint. Including the last guy that you named, the three remaining players all share uh, a name of some sort. Two guys and two guys share a first and a last name. Two guys and two guys. Boy, you phrase things in confusing Sorry, ways yeah. sometimes, Logan. <laughs> two guys Two guys share a first name. Two guys share a last name. Okay. And they all involve the last guy who I just said, or there's two separate pairings entirely? Two separate pairings. One of the pairings includes the last guy that you named. The last guy it I named correctly. It was correct. It was Steve. correct, yes. Okay, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's not red cur and it's somebody who shares the name steve very interesting uh, is it steve novak bro what dude don't laugh at that steve novak was a sniper dude i know steve, steve novak, novak was wet but actually he was I'm sorry. seven seasons seven seasons it's not a bad guess thank you thank you this guy just doubled it he had to double it are you for real? He doubled it and he gave it to the next person. 14 seasons? Over 40%. Isn't that gnarly? Well, I am clearly missing someone extremely obvious. But Dude, honestly, even... that makes it hard because now I'm all freaked out and I just keep thinking about Steve Smith. 
Bro has the first name. Just can't get him too. out of my head. I know. It's Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Dude, now I'm thinking about Steve Blake. I'm just, <laughs> I'm all over the place. Okay. Let's take a deep breath. Collect yourself. He's an all timer. I'm all out of whack. I'm all out of sorts. I gotta start thinking about other people. Okay. I hate to be the, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You have sixty seconds, Carson. Oh my God, that is gonna make this impossible. I don't. It's know not if impossible. I can deal with these kind of pressures simultaneously. Okay. Once some, uh, he's got some hardware, big time. Steve Nash, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Okay. Now, uh, how many more do I need? Two guys, both share a last name. The two remaining share a last name. Yes, sir. And so you've it's not Stojakovic. But you glossed over him. Let's think about common last names. Smith, Davis, Johnson, Jones. I already named one of them. Mm -hmm. But I glossed over him. You also may have, like went really in-depth on this guy recently. Reggie? Reggie? Reggie did this? Reggie Miller, 10 seasons and at the buzzer. We're at the buzzer, baby. Okay. All right. Let me gather myself for one final guess. I can't believe I didn't guess Reggie. I don't know. I guess just because his career is 39.5%. That's insane, though. I spent so much of my day today looking at his basketball reference page, and I did not think that he had 10. But when you play for 20... And you're one of the best shooters ever. You've got a pretty good shot at it. Okay. Who is the other Miller? Mike. It's got to be. Mike Miller at the bottom. Come well on! Done, man. Let's go. With a little bit of the courtesy buffer for the last guest, but I like to play it that way. Okay, great question, Logan. Really fun. I cannot believe how tripped up I got thinking about dudes named Steve. Logan, this one is pretty fun, and it's pretty outside the box. Since 1995, three players have five passing, receiving, and rushing touchdowns. Five or more of all three. Can you name them? Ladanian Tomlinson, is he one of them? He's one of the three. Is Antoine randall L one of them? No. Uh, it's not it a bad Ma guess. Is it, is it Muhammad Sanu? No, that's also not a bad guess. Let's see how close they both are. I, I'm just thinking about out of position guys who had, you know, rocket launchers on. Yeah. Them or, so you know, Antoine Randall did this for passing and receiving. He just never had a rushing touchdown. Yeah, dude. Bill Cower liked to scheme up some plays for Antoine, man. A lot, a lot more uh, often than you think. Sanu had four passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. So another very logical, good guess. But do we have any quarterbacks here? Like, are these guys out here catching TDs? You You're do. Secure me. You're secure me. That's kind of scary. Since there's uh, I think Cordell Stewart. Cordell Stewart. Is oh, one of them. Logan, great pull. And now, honestly, the last one is I think the easiest. Oh, I hate it when you maybe say not that for you. Man. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's all sorts of subtle ways to make these questions harder, and, and that was an accident. But that's okay, so one of is them. this the most? Is this the most recent guy to do it? He is. Oh man, that does not bode well. And when I think about meeting all three of these criteria, nobody pops to my head more instantly. And he's not a quarterback, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. My door got a little creaky. Uh, Julian You're Edelman. Oh, that's a really interesting thought. QB at Kent State. I don't. I don't know what that air means. Did he? Did he transition from being Josh? Josh McCown. He does a little bit of quarterbacking. He dabbles. He dabbles. He dabbles. 
Edelman did throw one passing TD, but, you know, Bill didn't like to get very creative. This is this is the guy you think of. Um, yeah, I don't want to give another hint. Oh, man, and I'm... Okay, I'm, I will. I'm stuck on He's been Edelman. listed... At three different positions in his career as, like, what he played that season on Pro Football Reference. No shot. I thought Slash was the only guy in NFL history that kind of ticked all those boxes. No, this guy, it's, it's like... To, it's his, Terrell Pryor, right? It's not. Oh. Oh, man. It's his thing, Logan. This is all he's known for. He's a gadget guy. It's, it's Sean Payton's best friend, Taysom Hill. It is Sean Payton's Dude. best friend, Taysom Hill. That's an, that's an elite question, Carson. That's fire. Thanks, man. Another one of my favorites that I've come up with for this episode. So we go from some of the greatest three-point shooters of all time... Two gentlemen who never made a single one in their career. Carson, can you name the top five scorers of all time with zero career three-pointers made? So incredibly fun. I'm going to guess Kareem does not have one. Kareem has one exactly. I don't know if it was a full court. I don't know if he hit one. He does have one in his career. Shaq has one, right? Shaq does have one. Okay. So, Wilt, obviously. Wilt is number one. We're going to have Elvin Hayes. Elvin Hayes actually hit one. No way. <laughs> Crazy, right? Exactly one as well? I don't know if Elvin hit exactly one, but he had a percentage on his page. Let me confirm how okay. many he had in his career. Man, I'm scared to guess Moses because he played all the way into the 90s, but I will guess him. Dude, Moses hit like eight. <laughs> Damn. Wow. All right, well, the cheat code here is the dudes who played before it even existed. Jerry West, Oscar Robertson, are they here? Both here, and you're missing another guy that fits that criteria. West is four, Robertson is two. Uh, Elvin Hayes actually hit five in his career. How about that? Classic stretch big. Is the last pre-three-point era guy Elgin Baylor? Not Baylor. Uh, yeah. Probably a guy who played a little bit longer. Okay. Hold out on giving me any hints here just because okay. I know that we're in the upper echelons of all-time scores. So there's somebody between Oscar and Jerry. That's really interesting. I know that Duncan has a few. Who is another great throwback? Probably a big. One of these guys is a big. One of these guys is a wing. One of these guys is a wing. I mean, honestly, no. Dr. J definitely has a few, but not a whole lot. And you've got uh, okay. both both of these guys, Carson, played for the same franchise. Oh, John Havlicek. Hondo is number three. And is it Robert Parrish? Boom. Well done. Wow. That was a really fun question. Logan, nicely done. Okay, I wanted to stick in a very similar lane to the question that I just asked you because I think it's super interesting. Can you name the only player since 1970 with 1,000 passing yards and 1,000 receiving yards? Terrell Pryor. Yep, right on the Let's money. Let's go! When you mentioned him... Dude, I literally thought about a version of the previous question that had Terrell Pryor, but he had, I believe it was just four rushing touchdowns, so he didn't quite meet the 5-5-5 meet the five, five, five criteria. But 
Yeah, man. Did you remember that Terrell Pryor had a thousand yard receiving season? I mean, he was good. Was it with uh, was it with Washington or Cleveland? No, it was with Cleveland. I didn't know that he had, was that good, but it really surprised me that he was unsigned because then nobody else picked him up. He just became a free agent, and then I think was out of the league. 140 targets, bro. They were force feeding my boy Terrell. I remember Terrell Nicely done. having that. I remember Terrell having that 93 yard rushing touchdown against the Steelers, though. That's a mm-hmm. core memory mm-hmm. that will never be washed away. Carson, another fun it. one. Can you tell me the top 10 players? The most career points without a finals appearance. Okay. So we're going to start with Carmelo Anthony. Yes, sir. Then we're going to work our way to Dominique Wilkins. Yep. Okay. We're going to have Alex English. English number five. Do we have Bernard King? You don't have BK. Okay. Okay. Do we have Tracy McGrady? T-Mac isn't here. That's not a bad guess. Both of those guys, just injuries kind of hampered them from career. Mm-hmm. These are total points, I'll note. Right, 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 right. So I was thinking about Adrian Dantley, but he was on the 88 finals team. Did not get to stick around for the titles. Okay. Who goes hand so, in hand with Dantley, though? Who goes hand-in-hand with Dantley? George Gervin. Gervin, that is correct. George Gervin will be on this list. And this is NBA only? So, I did include ABA. This is NBA and ABA total. Uh, Dan Issel and Artis Gilmore would both be here, but they went to the ABA finals, and so I consider that as a trip to the finals. Very logical procedure, Logan. Very, very logical procedure. Okay. So, uh, let's think. Are there any dudes who are still active who uh, could fit Dude, this? You've got four very modern players on this list. Four very modern players. Okay. Do we actually, have DeMar five, DeRozan? Excuse me. Yeah, you've got actually five really modern players on this list. And then one throwback who I know you can get. Uh, DeRozan is on this list. Do we have LaMarcus Aldridge? You have LaMarcus Aldridge. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I was thinking about, like, Blake or something, but he wouldn't have been healthy long enough, consistently enough. Okay, other modern guys. Anybody in the 90s who got stifled never made the finals at all? I mean, Steve Nash isn't here, is he? Not Nash. Uh, only, yeah, 2000 uh, basically and on. Wow. Okay. Super well, interesting. You do have one throwback, um, a four-time all-star. He's the toughest one on this list for sure. Um, played in the 60s and 70s. Is it Walt Bellamy? My man, it is Walt Bellamy. When in doubt, guess Walt Bellamy, folks. It always works out. Okay. Dude, I I think it's cake from here, dude. You've got three very modern guys. Yeah, it's not like Dame, right? Uh, not Dame. Oh, okay. Okay. Is ISO Joe Johnson here, Logan? Yes, he is. He's number nine. Okay. Uh, You're missing a... Who are other guys like that? Oh, my God. I haven't said Vince Carter. Wow, number four. All you're missing is number 10, and I know you like to guess this guy, too, Carson. Oh, my God. Hold the applause. Is it Antoine Jameson? Antoine Jameson, number 10. See? Wow. Great question, Logan. Okay. How did I not say Vince? After all of the Vince talk, he's like, got to be one of the most obvious ones. All right. Logan, you are from Virginia, allegedly. Mm -hmm. Can you Mm -hmm. name me the five Virginia-born players to be selected to four or more Pro Bowls? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Uh, We have Rondé Barber here for sure, right? 
Yes, indeed. Do we have Tiki Barber? You do not have Tiki. Do you love me? Are you riding? Where is Tiki? I mean, running back's just kind of a tough one to consistently be up there for Pro Bowl. And also, Tiki liked to fumble that ball. Yeah, Tiki was a three-time Pro Bowler. So that's a good guess. Is London Fletcher a Virginian? Let's see, Logan. London Fletcher, no, he's from Ohio. I'm afraid you can't claim him. Well, what's really I, weird is I'm looking at this list on Pro Football Reference, and Tiki isn't showing up here. He's from Big Stone which, Gap, like, though, yeah? Well, I don't know if they think he and Rondé were born in different places. That seems pretty improbable to me, but I'm not a doctor. They're from, it says born in Roanoke here. Went to Cave Spring High School for both of them. Oh, Russell but, Wilson's going to be here for sure, right? Russell Wilson. Was he born in Virginia? I know he went to He Virginia. actually wasn't. He was wow. born in Ohio. What is it up with Ohio? Yeah, dude. Maybe Russ went to you high identify school. as an Ohioan. Shout out to a guy who I think could have done something in football if he played. Allen Iverson would have been a beast on the gridiron had he stuck at it. Yeah. I, I, to, I don't know if his body could take that. I hate to ask Carson, can you give me like their positions so I can just kind of narrow it down a little bit? Yeah, and I'll give you something else too. All of these guys went to Virginia colleges. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. You know what? So we're cool. Okay. D'Angelo Hall, is he here? Oh, dude, three-time Pro Bowler. What about Cam Chancellor? Yes, four-time. What about Michael Vick? Yes, four-time. Two to go. go. Come on. Or two to go, excuse me. Chris Long, is he here? No. Kyle Long is actually a three-time Pro Bowler. Very close. Let's see. Where is Chris? Chris went to UVA. Um, Chris was never a Pro Bowler, dude. How about that? He's got to be one of the best never Pro Bowlers ever sure so we're looking at you uva we're looking at it's got to be virginia and tech i i don't think we're gonna have like a virginia union or a d3 guy here uh, uh, what other there's college? one exception um, and it's a legendary player is it radford is that where he went mm -mm. very small school with a weirdly prominent football like representation interesting this guy shares a college with the pittsburgh steelers head coach logan and the buffalo bills head coach therefore wow dude i mean i that that's william and mary uh mm -hmm. the last guy is an offensive lineman he's the toughest one for that is reason. It, uh, is it Dwayne Brown? Let's go! Five times! This one now, you gotta get it. Can you, do you mind, is the position a dead giveaway? He's a DB. Man, William and Mary knows how to put out some DBs, boy. McDermott was for a real. DB. Tomlin was a wide out. Defensive back, William and Mary. Uh, modern, post-2000. Mostly. I don't know if Daryl Green... No, no, mostly, mostly. What am I talking about? Where is so, Daryl Green from? DMV legend. Mostly split 90s to 2000s. He's on the Hall of Fame All-2000s team, Logan. He was... Rod, Rod Woodson? That good. Mm-mm. I like right, how I go talking. mostly 2000s and you think about Rod Woodson. We're talking about a bona fide legend here, though, if he's all 2000s team. Put the team so, on his back, yeah. Ed Reed went to Miami. Troy Palomalu, USC. I'm in disbelief right now. Champ Bailey? Mm-mm. I'm giving you two more guesses. Okay, we got to clutch up. We got to clutch up. 
I dropped the greatest hint of all time. I don't know if I can keep cooking like this and not have it appreciated and used, bro. I mean, maybe I'm in, you just didn't hear me. I'm in disbelief. Is that is that the hint? No, it, no, it was before that. It must have went over my head. Oh my gosh. I'm probably going to be upset at this. Who is it, man? Darren Sharper. Did I, you hear me say put the team on his back? Yeah, I thought about uh, I thought about Greg Jennings. No, you have to think about the video. Dude, I actually did not know. I mean, Sharper was a beast. I did not know he went to William and Mary. That's that's crazy. How about that? All right, I got a really simple one for you, Carson, about one of your favorite players. Despite being sixth in career rebounds with over 15,000, Tim Duncan never led the league in rebounding. True or false, Carson? So, this is true per game. It is false for total rebounds. Oh my gosh, you said I don't even need the I don't even need the asterisk next to it. Yes, that's exactly correct, dude. Led the league in total rebounding one year, never did by a per game status. Right now, my friend, you were pitching a perfect game, eight for eight. Hey, don't talk about it, buddy. You're not supposed to mention that sort of thing. Okay, Logan, can you name me the NFL's all-time leading internationally born wide receiver? Is this notable? Like, is he known for this? Oh, well, I don't know. He's a great receiver. All time. With We're doing this. Uh, an international uh, parent, so it's not like just some fluke. But he's yardage? not like an international guy, per se. Yes, by yardage. And I would expect you to know this a bit more than the average Joe. International parent. Um, I, I don't know why. I, I'm just thinking about Chris Carter right now. I don't think that's right. Chris Carter? It's not Chris Carter. I don't know this off the dome. Um, Fitzgerald's up there. Terrell Owens. Now, why might I expect you to know this a bit more than the average Joe? Because Heinz I respect Ward. your football knowledge, sure. It's Heinz Ward, Logan. Heinz Ward, South Korean mother, born in South Korea. Absolute dog on the field, too. One of the greatest pass-blocking and run-blocking wideouts of all time. I don't know why he'd be pass-blocking as a wideout. He normally goes out and catches passes. He does that sort of thing. That's crazy. Right. I didn't know that, dude. We're. I hope we get to a point, Carson, where the NFL game is a little more international and accessible. Too. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I have come up with another one of my favorite questions uh, in Trivia Time history. I love this one, Carson. Okay. Can you name one of the most 10 unsuccessful player-turned-coaches in NBA history? This is by winning percentage, uh, had to play post-1970 with a minimum of 100 games coached. Isaiah Thomas. It's not on the list by terms of loss per, of winning uh, percentage. Isn't that crazy? Hmm, yeah. So, uh, let's think. Man, we've had some catastrophic failures recently. Like, Steve Nash obviously won't be there for winning percentage, but that was pretty ugly. Uh, Jason Kidd has done not so great, but his winning percentage is going to be fine. So, who just absolutely failed? Magic was not a good coach, but I don't think he'll be here. You had to take over... A bad situation. Okay. I think Elgin coached the Clippers before he, like, took over in the front office. Is he here by any chance? Elgin Baylor actually is not here. Maybe he never coached. Maybe I imagined that. Okay. Hmm. This is a great question. I feel like Isaiah is just the most catastrophic, mm -hmm. like coaching and front office failure who I think of immediately. 
Who else dipped their toes into it? See, Isaiah Thomas, yeah. just He just coached a lot more than these other guys, right? You know, a, a lot mm-hmm. of these other guys just over 100 career games coached, and then they were canned and never got another opportunity. Right. God, this is just making me think of all sorts yeah. of random names. These guys are Dude. way too good, but I just want to shout out Avery Johnson and Vill- Vinny Del Negro. Bro, I, Elgin Baylor's boys. a really good guess. 38.9% uh, winning percentage. Okay. Obviously, his boy Jerry West coached for a bit, but those teams were better. I'm just thinking of all the players turned coaches, man. Richie Guerin coached the Hawks. Somebody give me someone who really sucked. The two most. Uh, hold guys. on. Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold on a minute. Derek I'm... Fisher? Yes, sir. Derek Fisher is on this list. Uh, I'm going to run it off in order. I think this is interesting. The worst ever, Brian Winters, Sidney Lowe, Mark Ivoroni, Earl Watson, Kurt Rambis, Gene Little, oh, Earl Watson, Jack McCloskey, ML Carr, Derek Fisher, and Fred Carter. Uh, an interesting mix there, man. But yeah, a lot of guys I didn't even know were, I had spent time in the league too. Derek Fisher is correct. Number nine worst all time by winning percentage. Who did, who did D fish coach? Dude, that's what I was trying to remember. That's why I was so uncertain about that guess. Wasn't it the Knicks? I think it was. Can you look that up? I think you're right. Dude, that was like such a vague memory. That's why I did the whole hold the phone. Because I like was not super confident. But have you confirmed? Knicks head coach, yeah, 2014 to 2016. Whoa, it was multiple years? Yeah, dude. That is so weird. Super weird. Okay, here we go. Perfect game still alive. Earl Watson was honestly easier. I mean, those Suns teams were just brutal. Mm -hmm. So, Logan, this is interesting because it relates to a little spiel that you went on earlier. Cam Newton. We, a couple weeks ago when we had Matt Spawn, our unknown Panthers fan, talked about his all-time leading receivers. He had seven first-team All-Pro teammates in Carolina. Can you name them? Let's do it. Uh, Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis, are they both here? Yes, they are. Keekley five times. Are we going to have... This is a strange guess. Deshaun Goldson. That is a strange guess, and it's not correct. Steve Smith should be here, right? Steve Smith is actually not here. Did, did they have to cross over? Like they had to pl- they had to be an all pro. Yeah, Al guys who team. were. That's correct. Greg Olson. Ooh, very interestingly, Greg Olson is not here. McCaffrey. I bet he got a second team all pro or two. Yes, McCaffrey. It was a year that Cam only started two games, but I counted anyways. Dude, Olson was two times second team all pro. Yeah, dude, Olson was really good. He was. I feel like, um, damn, what was that There's... dude's name in the middle? Uh, oh, like yeah, Big I will say there's one guy. There's nothing overly flashy left. Oh, I don't think you have a big Samoan guy left, but you do have uh, some big boys left. Uh, is Ryan Khalil here? Oh, I know. Are you thinking of Star Lotulele? I am thinking of Star. No, not Ryan Kerrigan. The big boys are offensive. No, no, so. no, no. Ryan is if it's not Ryan Khalil. I'm oh, Ryan, Ryan Khalil. Khalil. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. My bad. Sorry, I heard Ryan Kerrigan. Um, three to go. A couple other big boys on the line. Um, I don't know why I thought Ryan Kerrigan. M- Michael Orr. No, although he was the subject of the film The Blind Side. <laughs> Did start for 2015. Dude, um, how was Michael Orr second for Offensive Rookie of the Year? 
Bro was playing good. right tackle. Jordan Gross, is he here? Not Jordan Gross. Damn. Super good guess, though. He was a first-team All-Pro in 2008. This other lineman, I actually would associate more with uh, another franchise that he went to right after this. Damn, Trey Turner. Not Trey Turner. <laughs> now I'm thinking about DJ Fluker. Uh... Dude, Trey Turner is such a good guess, though. He was a four-time, no, five-time Pro Bowler with Cam. Yeah, That's he was a good. great guess. And then he came to Pittsburgh and kind of stunk a little bit. What are the other position groups that I'm looking at uh, with these other guesses? Or do we got an edge rusher or something here? So you have a guard. You have uh, DB. And then you have... Um... An offensive player who is sort of a big boy, sort of a skill position, almost between the two. I feel like I'm missing a, a, a really good corner. Um, you are. It's exactly right. Who is escaping me right now? This Man. guy... Uh, was in Carolina in the early years of his career, his oh, peak Josh years. Oh, Josh Norman, Josh Norman. Come on, dude. That's exactly right. And now, one of the offensive dudes you got to get. I just can't describe his position because it's rather singular. Was Kelvin Benjamin good one year? Not Kelvin Benjamin, but a guy with a similar build. Well, you said, yeah, kind of a big guy. Yeah, like a big ounce. Tight end. I can give you. I can Olson. give you his. I can give you his dimensions. He was five nine two forty three. Tolbert. Yeah, Mike Tolbert twice. <laughs> now, tank. The last lineman. I'll give you another hint on, because you've had some very logical guesses there. Guy went to Jacksonville. He's now in Washington. Can Logan summon some knowledge of the last five years of NFL history? It's not Brandon Sheriff, right? He never played in Carolina. No. Played in Washington, played in Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, but... Um, Tis not. Yeah, I'm just thinking about Taylor Moten right now, man. I hate to get so close and have to throw it in. Who's this last guy? It's Andrew Norwell, Logan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah i'm cool with you know yeah. what i'm, I'm cool with we're, Andrew norwell and we're gonna give you the point for that one because i think that's definitely the closest one if anybody objects well guess what you don't make the rules i make the rules all right carson i've had to slightly alter uh my the way i traditionally ask this question because i've done so many guys well hold on a second what do you mean by that just just just, just hear me out Monte Ellis averaged 19 points per game for nine seasons. Can you name the four players to average at least 19 alongside Monte? I've almost ran out of 20 point per game scores to ask this because it's such a rare feat. So I've had to take it down a notch. We got Monte, 19 a game. There's four guys who did it with him. Can you give me them all? Yeah, I'll sure try. Steph Curry? Actually not here, surprisingly. Are you kidding me? Wow. Yeah, 18 a couple of times alongside uh, Monte. Do we have Dirk Nowitzki? You do have Dirk one season. Now I'm thinking Milwaukee. Do we have Brandon Jennings? Jennings is a good guess. You actually don't have anybody in Milwaukee, though. Okay. So we've got to be looking at Golden State years. Now... Who was still there once Monte reached this level? Because you're really looking at like the 29 through 11 range when Monte's putting up his big buckets. Captain Jack, Steven Jackson. That's correct. Stack is one of them. I don't know if B. Diddy is around long enough, but I'll guess him. You have B. Diddy, so you just got one to yeah. go. This guy, natural born scorer. I don't remember him in a Warriors uniform, though. It kind of surprised me to even see that he spent a season there. 
that's really interesting. Super interesting. I mean, I was thinking about Antoine Jameson, but his Warriors years were much earlier. Just when you were talking about great scorers. This dude was born uh, to serve buckets. Can't be David Lee. Wait, is it Jamal Crawford? Jay Crossover. Jamal Crawford did it alongside Monte. Good pull, dude. Holy wow. Logan, can we acknowledge it now? I just pitched I think a perfect we can game. It. That's a perfect game, wow. buddy. Wow. Thank you. I mean, to be fair, I think that my questions were easier than yours, but I was pleased with my performance there. Outside of, like, the three-pointers question, I didn't feel like I ever really got tripped up. Okay, that was awesome. Logan, we're going to now hit you with one of your signature questions. Can you name me the three quarterbacks to start a single game for the 2004 Cleveland Browns? That's disgusting. <laughs> Jeff Garcia, is. is he here? Jeff Garcia is uh, the guy. In Started certain, 10 games. I know he was there in this time period. Is Trent Dilfer here? Trent Dilfer is actually not here. Dilfer's not. Man, this is a weird guess. Ken Dorsey? I just want to give Trent Dilfer a big shout out to being from Aptos, California. Uh, no, Ken Dorsey is not here, but I want to give him a big shout out for A, working for the Buffalo Bills, and B, having gone to uh, Miramonte High School, where my dad went. Are you going to keep guessing Bay Area legends, Logan? Man, I am... If I got a few more in me, who the hell was on the Browns in 2004? You got it. What about... Uh, took him to, took him to the playoffs. Um, he took him to the playoffs one year. Uh, oh, what's that guy's name? He lost to, he lost to Pittsburgh. Took him to the playoffs in like 01 or 02. Um, I'm wondering if he's still stuck around and got benched. He had a two-bar face mask, goofy-looking fella. I think, fella. yeah, I think you, uh, you're you thinking of the right guy. And I can't believe that you haven't just said his name. You love saying his name. I know, dude. That's what's messing with me. I, Bro, what does his name start with? K. Okay. Man. <laughs> what does his last name start with? You're going to get it. H. Yes. I, sorry. I needed that. I was not going to. It's Kelly Holcomb. I cannot believe Kelly Holcomb there you go. was not the first name that came out of my mouth. I know he was there. Yeah. Third guy. Did he get any burn? He started four games and uh, was a bit of a journeyman. This was his rookie year, though. He had just been drafted. Played all the way to 2015. Greg Kow... No. I don't think it's Greg Kowski. Bruce it's started not. in Tampa Bay in 06. Was undrafted, actually. I know that. Was he drafted by the Browns? He was. It's not Charlie Fry, is it? It's not the great Charlie Fry. I believe Fry was drafted the season after. It's not It's not Derek Anderson, right? By the way, you're exactly right. Charlie Fry was drafted the season after. No, it's not Derek Anderson. I think Derek Anderson was drafted like the season after that. He debuted in Cleveland the season after that. He was actually taken by the Ravens, it looks like, in 05. How about that? Okay, dude, we're going to go to a classic when we started doing trivia videos. Give me this guy's height and weight. All right, I love it. 6'4", 217. Mm. I can give you a college. Yeah, go ahead. Louisiana Tech. What? It's coming out of LA Tech like that. What? It's not a McCown, is it? It's not like Luke McCown, is it? Gulp. 
It is, Logan. It's Luke McCown. No way. Actually, let's it is. go. Yeah. Nicely done, man. Dude, I didn't know. I did not know he was on the roster that year. The Louisiana. I think I knew that. Like, I think the McCown boys are from Louisiana. That really helped. Okay, fire me up. Yeah, dude. Look at that. We end on a high note. Well, very classic episode here today, Logan. I mean, isn't this what it's all about? Just you and I doing trivia at the end of the day. Isn't this what we're gonna do until we're in our mid nineties? And, and I can't remember be talking the last about... seven. And I can't remember the last seventy years of football. It's gonna be crazy. Well, that's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a problem if we keep having to make all your questions from between two thousand to uh, twenty fifteen. We're going to need you to brush up on your 2080s stuff once we get there. But that's going to do it for us here today, guys. Hope you enjoyed, as always. If you did, and if you want more trivia content, then you can always check us out on TikTok, where we post trivia content daily at Nerd Sesh. You can also follow us on Instagram, same handle, Twitter at Nerd underscore Sesh. If you want more full shows, which includes a weekly trivia episode right now in the summer, and like we said, we've been bringing guests on and we'll continue to do that. Check out the volume YouTube page. You can see the full things there with video. And you can also check out the podcast on all audio platforms. If you just want to listen along, you can buy yourself some cool nerd sesh merch at thevolume.com or at the link tree across our social media bios. Just click there. It's the top thing and it'll take you where you need to go. You can get a shirt like the one Logan's wearing. You can get the flags like those that are behind us both right now. You can also get a shirt that has some of our classic nicknames on the back that we start all of our TikToks with. That's my personal favorite. But we've also got hoodies. We've got hats that we've worn on the pod before. So check all of that out if you're interested. But with that, as always, appreciate you guys. I've been Carson Brabber. I've been Logan Camden. And this was Nerd Sash. <laughs>